first I would describe the mood as somewhat somber um, because there are multiple crises facing the world. The war in Europe continues to grind on. No sense that that conflict is going to end anytime soon. Uh, although COVID-19 is over, uh, but it's long-term sequelae. Uh, healthcare, on education, the global economy, and even on the sense of global solidarity continues to weigh on the mood down here. A third factor is that uh, the world is clearly behind its achievement of the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and there's that sense that you know, COVID-19 kind of took people's attention away. And so we're behind time in achieving that. And then there's anxiety about a food crisis uh, looming in the, in the near future. And of course, you know, we've also had the natural disasters, the earthquakes in Morocco and earlier in Turkey, the floods in Libya. And on top of all these, you know, combination of natural and man-made uh, problems and tragedies, um, there's also the ongoing threat of climate change. And also, at the background, superpower rivalry. And what all this uh, is that it sets the mood that this is a world beset with multiple problems, which need, in fact, global leadership and solutions where everyone, all countries, pull together. But because of distractions, because of conflict, because of rivalry, there's this gnawing anxiety that the world will not be able to get its act together. And obviously, because this is the United Nations, you know, the, the ultimate body that represents the world and multilateralism, this is where all the anxieties come to roost. So that was the general mood. Singapore and Singaporeans need to know the state of the world. We need to understand the implications that has on our economy, on our standing, and both the risk and the opportunity. So my colleagues in MFA and the ambassadors, those who return home and even those who have retired, we're spending a lot of time uh, engaging Singaporeans you know, in schools and universities, workplaces, to explain the state of the world. This understanding of the forces and the trends that will affect our future is absolutely crucial. Then we also need Singaporeans not to be discouraged by you know, the clouds hanging over the world, but also to know that even a small city-state like Singapore does have agency, does have, we do have autonomy, we do have choices. And to understand that it means first focusing on ourselves, our education, our training, our skills, future, preparing our Singaporeans to face the future with confidence.